Um, I, was, I was tremendously excited to be able to be outside and play in front of our fans. That was uh, an extra bonus. We've never been able to do that since I've been here. And all the history I've looked into, I don't think they've ever been able to play black and gold outside. So that was a tremendous perk um, to play in our stadium. And I think we had a little nerves playing in such a large, large crowd against your, your teammates. And sometimes there's a little more pressure playing against your teammates than another opponent. But what I really like is the depth that we have in our, in, on the mound, in the circle, and coming out of the bullpen. We have great leadership with Lauren Krings. Um, she's going to probably do a lot of the workload. But having Sarah Harrison and Marissa McCann behind her, um, you know, seeing how they're able to compete against our own team, um, I know we're going to get a lot out of them and having the depth with Taylor Pinnell as well. Um, so that's going to add a lot in our bullpen. But I think the year of experience that we have in our lineup and getting another year with like Julia Crenshaw and Maddie Gallagher being in our program for her second year, uh, we know we're going to get great offensive production with Jenna Laird and Alex Honnold. Like they've been our, in our lineup every day since they've stepped foot on campus. And it's just making sure that we're surrounding those players with other great players so then they don't have to pitch around one or two. And I think we're getting that now. Um, someone I'm real excited to be able to see every single day is Madison Walker. She's going to be a highly touted freshman. Um, she's going to be a force in the lineup and someone that we're going to rely on heavily. And I think that's going to give Kara Daly a lot of protection. With Alex in particular, just what have you seen from her this offseason? Maybe, you know, what does a leap look like for her given how, how good she was last season? Yeah, and, you know, this summer she was able to play with Team USA and play over in Japan. So that's just another level in itself. And when you're surrounded with other future Olympians and Team USA members, um, you get a little bit different level, I would say, level of attention, not just media, but in what these other great players are doing. So I think she picked up a lot of that individual discipline and understanding you can't keep doing what you've done in the past because everyone's going to counterattack it. So Alex, I've seen, is becoming a lot more versatile in handling both sides of the plate. She's been working extremely hard on handling the inner half, and that's probably been the weakness in her inner swing. She handles the outside pitch extremely well, which is very rare for a hitter to do anyway, but she's worked extremely hard on the inner half, and I can tell you this entire preseason, like we have a hard time getting her out. So she's hitting both sides. Um, she's always recognized change-ups change -ups well, but it's really just becoming more of a student of the game and understanding how people are going to pitch her and her being able to counterattack that. Coach, one player you haven't mentioned yet is Maya Dodge, transfer from Northern Iowa. She's been playing at a high collegiate level already. Just what is she going to bring to this lineup as a newcomer? You know, her success. Like, you know, players have to experience success to, to really be confident. And she's had success at a very high level and now transitioning into the, our level in the SEC. So a, a big jump for her, but she knows what she needs to do in order to be successful. And that's really what she's adding to our lineup. Um, she has tremendous amount of energy. She's a very high intense player. So that's exciting to be a part of. She adds a lot of plate discipline, um, speed on the base paths. She's a force in the outfield. So just her level of experience and, and her competitiveness is what's really contagious. Coach, you mentioned earlier uh, how much depth you guys had this year. And a lot of that is returning depth from the last season, uh, since you've been the coach here. Uh, you just had years where not a lot of players come back. And you've had years where a lot of players come back. And a lot of players came back from last year's team. Just how important is continuity and uh, team success from your experience? I mean, <laughs> You could have the entire same team and culture is not always going to be the same, but it is great to have your highest offensive producers to be able to return because then you're not trying to rebuild a lineup. Um, we have the core of our lineup returning and now it's just fit, fitting a bunch of the other pieces into play. But the, the consistency is that culture piece, that leadership piece, and Alex and Jenna really lead the entire team and they lead by example. I mean, again, like I said, that they've been four-year starters. They've been very consistent in their performance. They know what it takes to play at the highest level. They know what, it, what you need to do as a team to be in the regionals and super regionals. So then it's guiding those younger players to get them understanding the same level of expectations. Um, you know, and I think last year we underachieved and we didn't reach our, our goals. So it's having that little chip on your shoulder and that determination that goes through our entire team on we want to achieve more and relying on Alex and Jenna to be able to take us there. You guys are going to be facing some tough competition right away in this first tournament. What's kind of the mindset or the goals that you have for your team in this first tournament you guys have down here? Large? You know, the, the biggest thing is we need to take care of ourselves. We need to focus on Mizzou. And it doesn't really matter who we play. We know it's a, it's a tough schedule. 
they're all competing. It's opening day, so everyone's going to be excited. Um, I don't worry about anybody else. I worry about us. So it's making sure that we stay disciplined, that we stay fundamentally perfect, that we don't try to make the game bigger than it is, and just be consistent in, in our performance, in our effort that we go in. The biggest message all preseason long has been just to compete. Compete in every single aspect. Compete on the mound. Compete in the batter's box. Don't have easy outs. And if we do those things, we're going to be more successful than we're not. When we get caught up in what the game means or the pressure of the situation or game on the line, then we start to get outside of ourselves. And it's just being consistent in those behaviors and realizing that it is a marathon. It's not a sprint, that this one weekend doesn't define our team. It's, it's the growth that we need to see going against another opponent. And as far as improving on last season, Coach, just, you know, what have you ideated this offseason as sort of the keys for, for flipping the script this time around? Um, a team first mentality, you know, and I think in collegiate athletics now and with NIL and the ability to be able to transfer, there's a lot of individualism and good or bad, I'm not here to judge that, but it's recognizing that it is in college athletics and the most successful teams are the ones that collaborate together and understand that it's about the team, it's not about those individuals. So it was getting this, this team to refocus on it's a team first mentality that we need individuals to be successful, but if they're putting themselves ahead of the team's success, we're not gonna be successful. So it was refocusing all of that energy into having a team first mentality. And if you focus on the team, then you're not gonna be so caught up in your playing time, your stats, the pressure of you in that situation. You're doing everything for the success of the team. Coach, one aspect that's really team focused is team defense. I know that's been a big emphasis yeah. here these past couple of years. What have you seen defensively out of this team, and how do you think that they are going to translate that success into the games? I mean, we, we're stronger than we've ever been. We're quicker than we've ever been. We've had a kind of a revamp within our strength and conditioning and trying to build on where our bodies were in the past just to be more explosive. And I'm seeing that translate into our offense, into our defense, and being able to move quicker, to be more explosive in, in our movements. I mean, fundamentally, we were, we're perfect. We're so polished, we work extremely hard on it. We're always gonna be a, a very strong defensive team. But now it's taking from making routine plays to now let's make great plays and take more risks and lay out for more balls. And we're, we might not be successful, but maybe we will be. And if we take those risks and we start laying out from our balls and challenging our opponents, then we're going to be pushing ourselves outside of our own comfort zone. And that's when we're going to really start to see true success. What's unique about this group compared to many, uh, many of the other teams that you might have had in the past? I think the, the camaraderie. I mean, we've been very intentional in doing a lot more team activities outside of just practice. Um, we went paintballing as a team, and that was extremely fun because you're taking in a competitive atmosphere and taking it off the softball field and doing something else that's competitive. Um, we've done team yoga. We've gone to team movies together, and then we kind of we saw boys in the boat together. So then we're picking apart the the analytics of that movie, um, different things like that. So then we get to know each other a lot more because when you you trust the teammates to your left and your right, now you start to play for them. And you're, you're no longer, like I said before, you're not thinking about the individual selfishness that athletes sometimes look into. You're thinking about each other. And that's what's really different about this team. They have, they have a different level of intent. Um, they understand what they're trying to accomplish. And they're doing it for the right reasons and not just doing it for themselves. Coach, uh, you mentioned the uh, pitching depth behind Lauren, uh, how that's going to be very important this year. Uh, Sierra had a very good season last season as just a freshman, uh, now as a sophomore. Uh, how do you think she's a different pitcher right now than she was at the beginning of last season? You, you have to experience playing at this level to know what's expected of you and how to reach success. I can't simulate that in practice. Like you have to go against the All-American hitters and realize that when a ball's left over too much of the plate, it's going to get hit extremely hard. Um, that's what Sierra experienced. That's what Marissa McCann is going to experience. And it's taking that knowledge and that, that experience and then realizing what you need to do in order to be successful. And it's watching those, the game film and watching when you get swings and misses versus when the balls hit hard. So all of that has taken her to be more of a pitcher, not just a thrower, and understanding her craft on how to be able to get pitchers out, or hitters out, I'm sorry. Um, the big thing that she needed to develop is an off-speed pitch, and she didn't really have a true changeup last year. Um, we would occasionally throw it, but it was not effective, and it's not something that we would rely on. So she spent a lot of time developing a changeup that really is going to add more into her repertoire.
coaches, you talk more about pitching, Marissa McCann obviously looked very impressive during the Black and Gold game, and this is a freshman. What have you seen out of her already as a freshman, and what do you think her role is going to look like this season with this team? Yeah, she has, she has so many tools, and that's really exciting. She's got great movement, unbelievable swing and miss movement. She can throw the ball up, she can throw it in. She's got a screwball that I haven't seen for quite a while at the level, and she's got a, a curveball that's a different velocity. So every pitch she throws is a different speed, so it's extremely hard to get on time with her. Um, we, we had an inter-squad scrimmage, and she was throwing against Jenna Laird, and Marissa threw this backdoor curveball, and Jenna just stepped down, and she's like, I've never seen movement like that. So that's exciting in itself. Again, she's a freshman. So she has not played this level of competition. So it's going to be pretty similar to what I did with Sierra, protecting her a little bit, putting her in situations. So I know she's going to be successful to build up that confidence that she can compete at this level. And then it's going to be throwing her into the wolves because I think the potential that she has is, is going to be tremendous and someone that we're going to really rely on this year and her entire career. You talked about having a little bit of a shift on your shoulder because you guys feel like you underperformed last year. Does getting picked to finish 11th in the SEC kind of also add fuel to that fire as well? I mean, it's like Eli Drinkowitz says, you know, something to prove. And that's kind of the same mentality, and it's, it's just about us. And we have to take care of our locker room and what we need to do. And, you know, polls, we understand polls are political. Polls aren't really a true representation of the body of work. Um, go ahead. I'd rather be at the bottom and prove everyone wrong than be at the top and have the bullseye on your back. So we're going to go out and we're going to compete the same way regardless of where those polls are, are picking us. Um, but, I mean, our number one goal is to play regionals back in our stadium. I mean, that's what we're going to work towards and, and that's what we're striving to be and we have a schedule to be able to do so. You talk about that schedule, jumping ahead a little bit, but like you mentioned, the SEC is very deep this year. When you look at that SEC schedule, what really stands out? I mean, it's, it's tough. Like, again, like 13 out of 13 go to the NCAA tournament. So, again, it doesn't really matter where you finish because you're pay, playing such a competitive schedule. Um, I think opening up here with Auburn, I think that's going to be extremely exciting to open up the SEC tournament. And then the last week of the year, going from South Carolina all the way down to um, Auburn for the SEC tournament, I think that's going to be a really good stretch. But, I mean, it's an extremely competitive schedule. It always is. We don't play everybody, so it's almost, you know, every other year it's a little bit different vibe. And it's great for our players to be able to experience some different venues that they haven't been to before. Um, but overall, I mean, it's always going to be competitive. You're playing a super regional team every single weekend, so you better be prepared. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Cool. Thanks.